assuming you aren't overly happy with what you've gotten out of your GM Studio scan, um, the next thing you probably want to look at doing is meshing it outside of the application. Um, as I said, it makes quite a nice model, uh, but it's not overly detailed. So what we look at doing there is exporting uh, each of the scans that we've made to process another application. Depending on the application, you can pick either ASC or PLY. Um, just as a note, PLY is the only one that works in RevoScan, uh, so we're going to export for that. I'll export it as a PLY. If you're going to Cloud Compare, you can either use PLY or ASC. I did find ASC a little bit easier if you want to edit the, the mesh data as a text file, but you probably don't want to do that anyway. Start a new project here. So you can see what that looks like. We just need to go and import each of the exports we did, so one per scan. Put them all at once. So there are some a bit of noise as you can see around the model. Uh, still, there are some tools that are built into RevoScan to take out some of those outliers. Uh, you can see certainly once you turn off the texture, they're a bit more visible. So what we'll do is we'll just merge all those together so we can work with them all at once. We don't need to preview because it's already been aligned to Jam Studio. Just generate a single. Scan's not too bad in terms of system resources. Uh, it seems to use a little bit less memory than JM Studio, uh, but that's probably because it doesn't have all of the um, scan data as well as the, the mesh. Okay, so once that's finished, let's see we've got one fairly noisy model. So what we'll do is we'll just jump in and take out some of the, the uh, outlier points. Fairly easy to use. So just find that isolation. I made a mistake there, I think, and clicked the wrong one. Uh, but that isolation value is an editable percentage essentially um, that just defines how far away the points need to be from the main model um, before it will take them out. So it detects quite good. Uh, it's fairly quick, and you can see how many of those points are going to come out. You can change the value and detect again. So we just jump across the merge, merge one, which is the one that we actually want to do the isolation on. So 25% is a fairly decent starting point, uh, depending on how messy it is, um, you can bring that uh, down a bit. So yeah, it's got quite a few points, they're all on the outside of the model. Few that it's missed, but it's done a fairly decent job there. It's just a matter of playing with that value. Uh, you can either cancel and redetect, or as we do there, just apply. So we're jumping across to the, the mesh, which is our next step. Uh, you can see the, the quality will be auto selected depending on how messy it thinks the mesh is. Uh, so you can change that yourself um, as well. If you find that value that it suggests is either too low or too high. One of those things you probably aren't going to know uh, too well until it's been meshed uh, in terms of do you need to bring that up or down. It's something you can kind of learn on a per model basis. So far I've found that the estimate it gives you um, is kind of between 5 and 6 by default for a fairly detailed model. Um, and whatever it's guessing is generally fairly good. If you find that your surface texture is a bit noisy, you might want to bring the quality down slightly. In either case, you're still going to end up with a lot more small detail than you're pulling out of James Studio. As you see, the system resources, it's fairly similar to what we were getting out of James Studio. CPU usage is probably lower while it's meshing. 
uh, but it does take a little bit longer, I've found. Um, in JM, it's really only slow if you're applying the um, texturing afterwards. You see there's some junk data that's hanging around the model, um, just mainly because we didn't do a lot of cleanup beforehand. Uh, you can certainly see, once you turn that texture off, there's a lot more detail on the model itself. Um, so small details, some of those lines in the chassis, uh, the missiles that are hanging under the wings, etc. It comes down to what your purpose is for the model. Uh, you probably a little bit too much detail on this one, uh, so the surface finish of the, the model isn't too great. If you're wanting to run off and print it, you're probably better off with what you've got out of JM Studio. Uh, but if you're trying to capture all that detail um, so that you can you know, print in live something or, or get a bit more information, it's easier to smooth selectively after the fact than have it all done for you. Certainly if we spent a bit more time kind of cleaning up points that are hanging around the model before we had meshed it, we would have done better. Definitely got a better result. You'll find if you've got a large model that it's um, it's going to be a lot less of that surface finish problem than you're finding with these really small models um, with lots of points that are very close together.